Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. <sighs> I just witnessed one of the dumbest horror films I've seen in recent years, and I've seen plenty of others, but this is yet another dumb teenage horror film. Brought to you by Blumhouse. <laughs> but this time, it's a horror movie about a party game. And guess what party game is it? Why? It's Truth or Dare. Also known simply as Blumhouse Truth or Dare. Yeah, because Blumhouse is a brand. It's a brand name that's owned by Jason Blum. Best known for giving us films such as Insidious, The Conjuring, as well as uh, two of my favorites last year, Get Out and The Belko Experiment, that's part of uh, Blumhouse Tilt. But also was responsible for giving us films like Unfriended, which fucking sucked, and I can't believe it's getting a fucking sequel too. Yeah, I saw the stupid trailer. It's also giving us uh, yet another Purge movie. How many fucking Purge films do we fucking need? <laughs> yeah. And all these other dumb films that Jason Bum just continues to produce. But whatever. <laughs> well, back to the track here. Everybody knows what Truth or Dare is. It's a party game where two players, or even more, they had to question, they either had to question themselves truthfully or dare themselves to do all these physical embarrassing activity that is just totally wild and bonkers or whatever. Well, that's always the case. Never thought this would turn into a horror movie, but hey, I guess Spin the Bottle isn't available. <laughs> Which, by the way, they did mention it in the fucking movie. Basically, the whole film is this. A bunch of dumb teenagers, you know, spending their spring break at Mexico, where all of a sudden they wound up in a Spanish mission where they decided to play the game, which at first started out as harmless, but then winds up turning out to be completely deadly. Especially when we're seeing... All the characters in their Joker face expressions, such as this. Truth or dare? It's almost like if they're in for an audition for the upcoming Joker movie, which I know there's going to be one with Jared Leto playing the role, rather than just being a typical horror film. And I pretty much predict everything that was going to happen. No doubt about it. You know what's going to happen next. Like, once they play the stupid game, they're going to end up getting involved in all these uh, lousy death scenes, all of which have borrowed from many of the, the Final Destination movies. And then they're just going to go around speaking the truth, and then it just leads to bigger problems. And then we have to look for someone who who may have been responsible for all this and then and then so on and so forth and then it becomes a, a ritual that's going to happen that's going to try to find a way to stop the curse that's that's going on and then you know what's going to happen next at the end where they're going to give us a sequel bait ending there's your movie guys i mean <sighs> come on people why can't you guys make a straight up horror film without any of this bullshit because the writer director and even producer Jeff Whalo obviously doesn't know how to do a horror movie just right and it really shows this is the same guy who gave us Kick-Ass 2 which I know Jim Carrey disowned the film I guess I don't blame him for having his character killed by Murder Russia. But i got to be honest, though. I, I didn't mind that sequel. I think it's a lot better than this movie that I watched.
But he also was responsible for Never Back Down, which that movie sucked. He also gave us uh, the Kevin James movie that came out on Netflix. True Memoirs of an International Assassin. Did anybody remember that? <laughs> How about Cry Wolf? Prey? I mean, he's also an actor, too. He's been in movies. <laughs> He was also in Pearl Harbor, too. Come to mind. <sighs> but he also went on to um, write the TV series like Bates Motel, The Strain, some other shows, I guess. So, whatever. whatever. <laughs> but I'm kind of amazed that they managed to get the actress from Pretty Little Liars, which I never watched that show other than... I, well, okay, maybe I did watch just a few, but I was never into it. I mean, it was on ABC Family, which is now Freeform. Um, but I already know who she is. Uh, she also went on to do the voice of Perwinkle, uh, the fairy in the movie uh, Secret of the Wings, uh, yeah, the Tinkerbell film. She was also in the movie Scream 4 as a cameo. And I was never into, I never did saw those, the sisterhood of, of the traveling pants. I was never into that. Uh, but she was in the sequel. From what I heard. Um, whatever. Uh, I can't decide if she's either a good actress or a bad actress. I sense she looks attractive. But... After seeing this movie, I'm not even so sure. Because I thought her character, Olivia Barron, was just as dumb as all the other characters in this fucking movie. Well, you have a pretty little liar here, who's basically a pretty little dumbass. The fact that she keeps making all these stupid expressions on her face, you know, all these wide-eye, um, but all these, uh, those big pencil lined uh, eyebrows on her face. I mean, I don't understand what, what is up with these stupid expressions she makes. I'm just like l laughing my ass off. But, hey, well, well, let's get to this movie. It stars Lucy Hale once again from Pretty Little Liars, Tyler Posey, Violet Bean, Hayden Sito, uh, Landon Laberon, Nolan Gerald Funk, Sophia Taylor Ali, Sam Lerner, Afora Paranu, Tom Cho, and Joe Ackman. It's written by Michael Rice, along with Julian Jacobs, Chris Roach, and Jeff Whalo. Yeah, he's one of the co-writers. And it's directed by, once again, Jeff Whalo. The movie begins during spring break. Olivia Barron, who's a YouTuber, go figure, along with her best friend Marky Cameron, Marky's boyfriend Lucas Morano, they're joined in with their friends Penelope Amari, her boyfriend Tyson Karen and Black Chain to go on a trip to Wasarito, Mexico just to have fun having the best time of their lives just going around drinking, partying, dancing hanging around at the beach while filming and texting and and posting all these pictures on Facebook and all that I mean on their cell phones I mean <laughs> so on and so forth but while they're in Mexico, Olivia had once into a fellow student named Ronnie, who was basically harassing her until a mysterious man by the name of Carter intervenes with on her behalf, but convinces her, along with her friends, to join in at an abandoned uh, Mexican uh, mission 
a haunted mansion to be exact, where Carter decided to play the game simply called Truth for Dare. Which I know they basically thought it was just a kid's game. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> they play the game. Ronnie suddenly follows the group while, well, yep, going around scaring everyone or so. He, <laughs> I mean, even in the game, you know, they have one guy stripped naked. Yeah, I believe that was Ronnie who was doing that <sighs> in that one scene. But by the time the game ends, Carter begins to reveal the truth to Olivia that the game is real. That it's turning out to be, instead of being harmless, it's deadly. So the game will actually follow them, but they must not refuse it. Because otherwise, something bad is going to happen. But it can only get worse. Well, by the time um, they return from um, the university, Olivia begins to see the word truth or dare that's being written around <laughs> everywhere she goes, like on the desk, on the car that's all scraped up, even on a flyer. Yeah. And I already mentioned this already. I mean, this is where he begins to see all the characters making all these Joker faces, those creepy Joker faces with red glowing eyes. So whenever their eyes glow, that's when they started to make that that creepy expression like this. And they said, "Kufa dare." Oh, and that's been going on and on and on. At first she she thought it was a prank. But it wasn't. It seems like it's really happening. I mean, some mysterious figure, as you can hear the voice coming out of her head, is actually playing a trick on her. And, and, he's, and she's not the only one that's going for that. All of her friends are, are suffering the same problem. I mean, at first they couldn't believe her, but then at the end, they begin to find out for themselves. And that's just what leads to all these other stupid, laughable death scenes. Like, for example, uh, Ronnie was, uh, as he chose Dare from a girl that does make that Joker face, and, she, and he goes up to the pool table and he because he just dares himself. And... <laughs> He basically just uh, slipped and fell and broke his neck and his back and all that. So like he's a human pretzel or something. And everyone had filmed it on their cell phones. They sent the video to, to their friends and they all saw it about what happened to Ronnie. And the whole movie just gets even worse and worse when it started to happen to Tyson. Because even though he was skeptical about the reality of the game, he begins to see the word true for dare or on the wall. Because he's beginning to hear the mysterious voice telling him, Lucas, 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 true for dare. And then he gets the true for dare word on his arm. So by the time they find all this out, um, this is where we lead to a stupid scene where Olivia gets a text. Once again, true for dare. And... <laughs> Why can't they just stop playing this stupid game and get it over with? Well, anyway, she chose Dare, and she begins to find out on her text that I dare you to have Marky grab a hammer and slam her, her hand. I'm thinking to myself, oh, she's not going to be that stupid to actually do that. I mean, come on. 
I, I mean, I swear, she's, she's not going to do it. She's not going to do it. She can't be that stupid. What Marky did is stupid. She actually listened to what Olivia had to say, and Olivia just basically just spread out uh, what he talks about uh, Marky's fodder, because we begin to find out that Marky's fodder had died a long time ago, and she still can't stop thinking about her fodder. She actually just took the hammer and slammed it on her hand, and now she's being rushed into the hospital. I can't believe I had to see that. I knew that I, I knew this character was so dumb, just like all the rest of the other characters in this fucking movie. Then we get to see another dumb scene where <laughs> even with these ridiculous jump scares, um, Brad Chain somehow um, was just ready to get some um, a snack at the at the bending machine, and then suddenly he spots a dead man with the Joker face, scaring him by saying, true for there. But of course, he can only seize him. That was just part of his thoughts. And then he begins to see his fodder, who's a cop. And this is where he begins to see him with a Joker face, too. God, you know, how many Joker faces do I fucking need to see these days? In this entire fucking movie. And that's why I'm seeing already. Is where all the characters have Joker faces. And they're just going around with their. <sighs> hilarious death scenes. Okay. I know. I know. I'm just. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm just getting into the whole. Fucking story here. <sighs> but I know. Uh, Brad decided to tell the truth about his father. Because he didn't want it to, to pick Dare. Because, after all, I mean, something bad was going to happen if he picks it. Oh, God. And, and this just goes on and on. There is another scene where Tyler actually uh, went inside his office. Because, after all, um, he is a doctor. He just went inside... Uh, he just went inside the office. He was just talking to the... To the black girl, and yes, the black girl has a Joker face too. Apparently, he just uh, he just takes the pen and stabs it into his eye, and kept stabbing it and stabbing it until he dies, because he dares himself. I mean, he tells the truth to to the black woman, and, and then, but oh, jeez. There's like so many dumb scenes that we had to see in this movie where we have, um, we actually have uh, Penelope actually going up on top of the roof while drinking because she just saw herself in the mirror, her Joker face, and then she had to go around drinking and she was almost ready to fall and then that way Olivia and all her friends decided to bring in her mattress so they could save her life. Because she was ready to fall. I mean, yeah, Lucas had to come right up on top of the roof to save her. Well, Olivia had to bring the car just to crash down the gate. Yeah, Marky and and Brad had to bring in the mattress. They had to put it on top of the, the fence. But unfortunately, it broke a little bit in half because, of course, we know how the fence is. It's It has sharp, pointy pointy uh, edges there. Anyway, Olivia had to crash into it. Uh, the mattress had to stay still. And then Penelope fell onto the mattress safe and sound. But then she had to bomb it because she just drank a lot. Olivia and her friends, um, already they, they just contacted the girl who was responsible for which was at the beginning of the movie where she she hears a mysterious voice in her head and she picked the game True for Dare. She had to end up picking Dare while talking to a store cashier and suddenly she actually puts liquid fluid onto a woman and actually light her up on fire. 
That's how you start your fucking movie right there. Because she's the one responsible for the death of the woman. And they, they wanted to need her help, but what, what does she do? Simple. She grabs a gun, ready to shoot Olivia, but wants up accidentally shooting Penelope. Because Penelope was trying to cover her. Lucas and Brad were trying to hold her down. But she shoots herself. What a dumb character. I'm, it, yeah, no wonder she's a murderer. Oh, God. And, and th this movie just goes on and on and on and on. And by the way, her name was Giselle. Giselle. That's right. Like the name Giselle from Enchanted. <laughs> Princess Giselle. God, Princess Giselle at least is smarter than this bitch. So the only solution to all this problems that's going around was Olivia and Lucas decided to drive all the way to Tijuana to meet a mute woman and a former nun. They're trying to find out how to stop the game from happening was that it's a ritual. That's right, a ritual where a long time ago they were playing a game which suddenly possesses the game of Truth or Dare where the only person that can stop it is the last person who evoked it by sacrificing their tongue. So in order for her to do that, the curse would end. So that means they have to they got to find all the evidence trying to find who this mysterious guy Carter is only to find out that his real name is Sam so they're trying to find him it turns out he was inside an apartment and just <laughs> trying to hide himself out but they took him anyway all the way to the same place where they had to do the ritual they held him at gunpoint yeah Lucas brought in a knife yeah Olivia just has the gun and and they had to give him all the all these rituals including that Spanish word that he has to say seven times plus cut out your tongue so that way this whole curse will be over as far as this movie is concerned I already know how this movie was going to end it was the curse didn't end at all it just seemed like they just used it as a secret bait ending where Carter is killed and so is Lucas because he slices himself with the knife with his neck yeah doing that Joker face again and then there's only two people left so it's only Olivia and Marky that which I know they were both arguing with each other I mean we begin to see the truth between the two where Marky begins to find out about her father that her father was actually a drunk and he goes around trying to kill Olivia but Olivia had no choice but to shoot him so that's why uh. so of course they're the only ones that live but she begins to warn everyone around the world on YouTube that the game is real it's a curse so we gotta find someone else to actually stop the curse if, if it's possible what can I say this movie is just so stupid that I, I just couldn't believe what's happening the characters are dumb no doubt about it the death scenes are laughable every expression that uh, that Lucy Hale makes is really uh, really something. I mean, the fact that she keeps making these wide-eyed expressions. I'm just thinking to myself, man, can you just try your best to to uh, squint your eyes a bit? All these Joker faces that they make, not only just creepy, but it's just not scary. And So on and so forth. I mean, the whole movie is just fucking dumb. 
Just like 100% on all these dumb teenage horror films, yet alone all these other horror films we've seen. I'm sorry I gave it away, but who cares? It probably saves you your grief and money. But sadly, no one had listened, so they went to see it anyway. They spend this amount of money for this movie to be made. Yet alone, The Prophet. You know, here's a better advice. Why don't you just say the word, NO? Fuck this truth for dare shit. In fact, I'll tell you the truth. The movie fucking sucked. That's all. But I dare myself to watch it. And that's what I did. And here's the truth. I watched it for free. And why? Because I was bored out of my fucking mind. That's why. Fuck this movie. So I give the film zero stars, as usual, for dumb horror films like this. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. I'll see you later, much later. Bye!